talking about the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. I want to wish everyone again a, a happy, resurrection, happy Resurrection Day. I know um, you will hear two terms today. You'll hear the term Easter, and then for myself, I prefer the term Resurrection, Amen. because that's the day he was resurrected. That was the day that he got up. Uh, but you'll hear both terms because some are more familiar with the one term than the other. But uh, I want to wish all of you a happy Resurrection Day. And I pray that your day is beautiful, filled with love and family and friends. And, uh, and, and, and I hope that somewhere in there, it includes some times of reflection about what Christ did on the cross for you. Amen. Don't let the other things, I want you to have, enjoy the other things, but don't let the other things crowd that out. So let, set aside some time for that. I want to start off with, uh, my wife and I, uh, sometimes we have the hardest time finding things to watch on TV. Yeah. And, uh, and so sometimes, uh, not as, I don't do as much as, as she does, but sometimes we watch the, the game show channel. And one of the shows that we watch is called America Says. And it was on your bulletin. I know some of you already figured it out, right? Some of you, you saw it, you looked at it before, right? None of you? Oh, wow. I figured Mary would have it all done. <laughs> and the, the, the show America Says, the host comes out and there's two teams. And he says, uh, we have surveyed America. And, uh, and, and then what happens is that you have to figure out the top seven answers that America said for these questions, but they only give you letters. They don't give you the whole word, they just give you letters. So I've given you some letters, and the question is, we asked America, we really didn't, but just to keep the game show flavor, we asked America, when you think about Easter, what comes to mind? And let's start, let's start up on this side. What is the B? For bunnies. We think about bunnies. Okay, what about the C-E? Color eggs. Mary, you're good. <laughs> we think of, usually, when I remember when I was in grade school, we got the little paws of whatever little packs of, and you colored the eggs, and uh, we were nodding, we were cracking eggs on people's heads, and you know, <laughs> and every now and then you get a bad one, that was really fun. So colored eggs, here's a, I put one in there that I thought was going to be hard. Which, what is, when you think about Easter, don't, 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 don't. okay, we'll let Mary go next. When you think about Easter, what do you think about L? Lily. Lily? Yes, very good, we think about lilies. All right, very good, Warren, I thought that was going to stop them. Uh, the C at the top. That, that's a good answer, but that's not the one I have in mind. And this happens on the game show, too. Sometimes they give really great answers, but it's not the right answer. And notice that one line is long and one line is short. So what's the short one? Candy. Not candy. Church? Church. So we think about Easter, we think about going to church. What about this one? Chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Except for Miss Winella. She doesn't like chocolate, but I love chocolate. So we think about chocolate. How about that one? Easter bunny. Yeah, the Easter bunny. Easter or, basket. Actually, Easter basket. Oh, Easter okay. bunny would have won. Yeah. Would have worked, but Easter, Easter basket. Easter egg hunt. Me. <laughs> oh, so Easter egg hunt. And here's the one that we want to talk about. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. All right. And I want to, I'm just going to kind of follow the outline, so if you have your, 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 your program, you can just kind of follow along. And I want to, I'll give you a little history. Number one says that the, the lamb comes from the Jewish Passover, where each family killed the lamb as a sacrifice. And to give you some biblical history on that, I've, I've included here Exodus chapter 12, 
And I want to read, it's pretty long, but I want to read it all for you because I want you to get the context. Anybody ever uh, watch uh, uh, Charlton Heston and Ten Commandments? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Yeah. Are any of those biblical accounts, the children of Israel are in Egypt. God has sent all the plagues, and one plague is left. And so this is where it takes up. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for your first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of the month, each man is to take a lamb. That's what we're talking about. Each, each one is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household, if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they may share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animal you choose must be year-old males, notice this word, I would underline this, highlight in your notes, without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood. Notice that one too. You take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs. Bread made without yeast. Number nine says, do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over fire. When the head, with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any until morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. Verse 11 says, this is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, because this is the exodus, right? They're about to get up out of here. So they said, hey, make sure you have your, your clothes tucked in and your staff and your sandals. <coughs> says, eat it in haste. It's the Lord's, underline this if you will, it's the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt, and take down every firstborn, both of people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the little g-gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. Verse 13, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And I underlined, it all, I underlined all of this. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. Somebody say, pass over. pass over. When I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over. And look, look in the next sentence. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a statement. You have to be under the blood. Amen. Because when I, when, when, when I see the blood, I'll... I'll pass over. Verse 14 says, This is a day you are to commemorate for generations to come. You shall, I underline this, you shall celebrate. So for, Jew, for Jewish Christians, uh, Jewish people, I shouldn't say Christians, but the followers of God that were uh, uh, in the Exodus, Moses and Aaron says to them, you're going to do this into your, forward into generations. You're going to commemorate this. You're going to remember this, that, that, that the blood that was on your doorpost caused the, the death angel to pass over you. Yes. I want to use this word. Type. Many things in the Old Testament are, are types. So what that means is that they are a foreshadow of what is to come. For instance, in the, in the Old Testament, when they built the tabernacle and they built the Holy of Holies, that was an earthly representation of what is in heaven. It's a type. 
And so this lamb that was slain, that was without defect, is a foreshadow of the lamb that would be slain for your sin and mine. See, in Hebrews it says that the blood of animals could never completely take away sin. So in order for our sin to be completely taken away, we needed a perfect sacrifice without any defect, without any blemishes, without any sin, and that was Jesus. And so Jesus becomes the perfect lamb that was to be sacrificed on your behalf. And I'm not leaving me out on mine as well. <laughs> and check this out, number two. Jesus, on, when he was here on earth, and even that, that what we call Passion Week, that week leading up to his crucifixion, he observed the Passover. He observed the Passover. Remember, he, he says, disciples, he, he said, Lord, where do you want us to prepare? He said, go into town and you, and you will see a, 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 a man carrying a water pitcher and ask him where to prepare. What he's asking is, where do we prepare to celebrate the Passover? Because Moses told us that we would forever celebrate this Passover. And so they prepare an upper room. And we call that the Last Supper. After the Last Supper, he goes to the garden to pray. He is arrested. He's taken to all these trials between, you know, back and forth. He's crucified. He sheds his blood. And he rose victoriously on the third day. So all of this happened. To give you a little, a little bit more history. All of this happened at the same time that the Jews are celebrating Passover. That's why there's so many people in town now, because it's the Passover. And so he celebrates the Passover, and then after he celebrates it, he becomes the Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. He becomes the Passover lamb. And three says that by his sacrifice, Christ becomes the Passover lamb for everyone. And I put this, once and for all. Hebrews tells us that uh, when the priests go in to sacrifice an animal, they had to go first and, and confess their sin. Then they would go and kill the animal so, to, for the sins of the people. And this had to happen year after year after year. But Christ, our Passover lamb, did it once and that's why he said at the end, it, end, it is finished. It's finished. That lady, she was singing. She said, I don't know why you love me so. I went left when you told me to go right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of us can say, Lord, why do you love me so? Why would yes, you give your life? Yes, why would yes. you shed your blood? You committed no sin. But you did it for, for me. This is how some people say it. There's a song we used to sing called Glory to His Name. And in one of the phrases in that song says, There to my heart was the blood of applied singing glory to his, glory name. To his name yes and so again the, the you guess, can you guys get symbolism mm -hmm. certain symbols in the bible are so important so the blood needs to be as it was applied to the doorpost and to the to the to the to the to the, to the, to the door, it also needs to be applied to my heart. Yes. But the, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? The, the Hebrew says that where there is no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's nothing, no cleanser, no good deeds, nothing that can cleanse us from our sin save the blood of Jesus. Amen. Look 
at number four. Excuse me, yeah, number four. Out of all of those, out of all of those, out of all of those, none have saving power. Except the Lamb of God. Except the Lamb of God. All these others, none of these have, and, and, and guess what? Uh, when, I, when I research these, these, these come from, from, usually come from Christians that are well-meaning. The color of the egg red is that represents the blood of Jesus. He said, well, bunnies borrow. They go down into the ground and then sometimes they come up. So that represents Jesus coming out of the grave. So we make all this stuff up. But my question is, when you know that he is the Passover lamb, why do you need to make stuff up? That's right. Amen. 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 So if I were gonna if I was gonna celebrate Easter or the resurrection, I want it to be biblical. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with you. I love chocolate, you know, you know. I don't have a problem with chocolate. Amen. I don't have a problem with, with a lot of these things, but if you put them In front of, or in place of, or before, or priority. None of those can save you. Usually, probably too much chocolate. <laughs> so here it is. Easter is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb after his crucifixion. Easter is the foundation of the, of the Christian faith. Christmas is awesome. That's his birth. But it, the, 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 his, his purpose for coming to the earth isn't complete unless he raises from the dead. That's right. Amen. So everything that you and I believe rests on the fact right. that he's the Lamb of God. That's right. It's the foundation of what we believe. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, fulfilled prophecy but there, because there was prophecy. Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray, and we have, laid, uh, we, have, we have all gone our own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He took on all of our sin. He fulfilled prophecy, and through his death, death has given the gift of eternal life in heaven to those who believe in his death resurrection. I want to, I want you to, to, if you're underlining, highlighting, I like that word believe. Because there's a verse in James that says the demons believe. Wow. Because that's the first, as a pastor, that's one of the first things that people would say to me. Oh, oh, I believe in God. And I, they probably say the same thing to you. Oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But that belief right there goes beyond just into your intellectual assent, I call it. This, this belief that they're talking about. Here's, here's, here's a classic example. Imagine, they're big lights. Mary, they're, they're, these big lights, they're camera crews, they're people at the Grand Canyon. And one of the Walendas says, I'm going to put a tightrope across the Grand Canyon, and I'm going to walk across without any, any, any kind of balancing thing. And he said, do you believe I can do it? And the crowd goes, yes, we believe you, the greater. <laughs> And he, he walks across the Grand Canyon, comes back. They go, you're great, you're the greatest. He says, how many people believe that I can take a wheelbarrow and roll it across the Grand Canyon and come back without a balancing beam or anything? They go, yes, you're the greatest. We believe. Yeah. 
He walks with the wheelbarrow across the Grand Canyon and comes back. He says, how many people believe that I can put a man in the wheelbarrow and walk across and come back? They go, oh, yes, we believe. He says, give me a volunteer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the belief that when you say you believe in Jesus, you have to be willing to take a step of faith. Amen. To get Amen. in the wheelbarrow, to submit your life. Mm-hmm. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you're the Lamb of God, and yeah. I'm staking my life on it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Can I say it this way? Forgive those who are a, a little bit more traditional. If that kind of belief that wouldn't take that step of faith ain't worth diddly. Uh, okay. Amen. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. Amen. Amen. Number six says, and I don't want you to raise your hand. But do you believe in his death and resurrection? Amen. That's an eternal question that you have to answer. I can't answer it for you. Do you believe in what I just told you about Jesus being our Passover lamb? Amen. Do you, do you believe his death and resurrection? And then I put down here, if not, you can begin a relationship with the Lamb of God today. You can begin it right now. And then next year, when I ask that question about, America says, when you think of Easter, what do you think of? You go, I think of the Lamb of God who died for me. That's your first answer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Here's a verse. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, in the New King James says, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you might be saved. Yeah. <laughs> you will be saved. What's it say? You will be saved. You will be saved. For with the heart, you have to believe in your heart, the blood has to be applied to your heart. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So in in these moments right here, I I would ask that, let me say it this way. If you had trouble with that question, do you believe in the death and resurrection? If you had a little trouble with that, if, if you had, eh, I think so. If there's any kind of reservation in your answer, let's take a moment to pray. In, in our Wednesday night Bible study, we recently were studying Mark. And this man brings his son who is having seizures, full of a demon, falling into fire, falling into the water, and asked Jesus to heal him, and his disciples couldn't. And the man said, heal my unbelief. So if you're, if you're having a little belief problem, maybe your prayer today is simply, Lord, heal, help my unbelief. If you're a person that you know at one time you have believed, but you kind of a lot of other things have crowded your faith and your trust in God. Maybe some circumstances have happened and caused you to not trust God. 
Let's take a moment to pray today. Because my desire is that everyone would know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So if you would just bow your head, just a few quiet moments. Heavenly Father, we've read your scripture where you showed that Jesus is the Passover lamb. And where the blood of the lamb is applied, you pass over. <laughs> we know that there's only two places we can end up when it's all over. We can end up with you in eternity, forever. Or we could end up separated from you forever. And Lord, I don't want to see anyone separated from you forever. And Lord, I know that uh, we're all on a journey. All of us are not at the same place in our faith, in our belief, in our walk. And Lord, if there's someone today that wants to take a faith step, who wants to get into wheelbarrow, who wants to say, I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I desire to have him as my Lord and Savior. I pray that they would confess their sin with their mouth and ask you to cleanse them and ask you to come into their life. But by faith, we believe it. We receive it. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.